Well, we get a nice taste of summer today, but Ron Harris says it's back to spring tomorrow. He tells us what that means in the early bird forecast. I'll tell you, Jack, means some more smiles. Spring with some sunshine out there. No big problems coming up around here. Those temperatures skyrocketing today into the 80s. Now it's all systems go for cooler, comfortable weather as Mother Nature cools her jets just a little bit around here. We'll talk about plenty of sunshine out there tomorrow. There will be some high cloudiness fanning overhead the first half of the day, especially over southeastern Massachusetts. Otherwise, some puffy clouds, beautiful breezes out of the west-northwest, 10 to 20 miles per hour. And temperatures, very common, will be around 73 Boston, westward in the direction of Springfield, down to Providence, Hyannis, Plymouth, all in the low to mid-70s during tomorrow. Very comfortable, lower humidity than today. High clouds around and some puffy clouds just adding to the beauty of the day. A little later on, of course, the complete forecast, and I understand there's a holiday weekend coming. Yes, I know. We'll take a peek at that because I just know Jack and Karen, especially Karen, will be asking about it. In about 20 minutes, we'll talk about that more. See you then. I don't even have a long weekend. <laughs> little frost on the pumpkin again tonight and uh, maybe on everything else, huh? Yeah, it's a chilly one. Colder in spots than last night at the same time. So we've got a date with Jack Frost and uh, North Carolina, a date with uh, Danielle mm. down there for tomorrow. It'll be moving in. Real serious or is it died Not down a little bit? Not real serious. Uh, I'll tell you, our own Dan Casey's a uh, lot stronger than this Danielle. <laughs> is. It's not a strong storm, our floor director out here. Just blow uh, some leaves around. Blow some leaves. There'll be some heavy rain, but uh, this is no Nikki, this is no Andrew, nothing like that. Good. And it's not going to be a big problem for us either around here. But over the weekend, we're going to get some clouds, unfortunately. And we're going to take a look now at some flower activity that did survive some of the frost last night. Not everyone getting it along the coastline. We were talking about basically, well, some wind, and that stirred up the atmosphere. So Randy Murdoch goes out and finds some beautiful flowers. And there you go. Pretty scenes, and we can make it through tonight. We'll be okay. But again, it's chillier in spots than it was last night. More on that shortly. A trip to the tropics will warm you up, and it's cooking in the tropics here. Hurricane Charlie, top winds of 110 miles per hour, may affect the Azores, which are way out in there. Meanwhile, Bonnie has weakened, top winds 65 miles per hour, so it's no longer a hurricane, a tropical storm, but it's moving southwest of all things, and this may loop back and may move in over warmer waters the next couple of days, so we'll have to watch that, but it's way out in the ocean. Closer to home, we do have Danielle right out in here, and this storm is maybe strengthening just a little bit, but it's now 75 miles off to the southeast of Cape Hatteras in North Carolina, and a closer look will show us how this thing has been moving during the past 24 hours. Right in here, I've enhanced and read the higher, colder cloud tops, the thunderstorm convection right in there. And you can see some of that activity getting close to North Carolina. It'll move in on North Carolina tomorrow, then loop back in here. So the heaviest rain is gonna fall out in here, maybe four to six inches. Top winds are only 45 miles per hour. This still has to be reckoned with and will cause some adverse weather, no question down here, but I don't see anything too, too tough to take down there, although there is some coastal erosion down through the mid-Atlantic because of high pressure banked over us, giving us our clear and cold weather. And between that and the storm, a lot of wind, and we were breezy around here, alleviating any real frost along the coast. Meanwhile, in the interior, it's calm. John Palmieri, Westboro, down to 39. Mike Coclo and Linfield says it's 35 already, and we've got temperatures in the upper 30s as well as you head into portions of Worcester County. So it's going to be a frosty night over portions of the Northeast. The high today, only 55. That's all we could manage. It should be 70 this time of year. You may wonder if your barometer is broken over the next couple of days. Normally the pressure, average sea level pressure, 29.92, we're up above 30.5 now, about 30.57 in Boston. That reads fair on your barometers at home. But the next couple of days, we may have clouds, even though the barometer says fair, and even some showers or drizzle, especially later Saturday into Sunday. What timing, huh? That's because of a dirty high, we call it. Banked up in here, the clockwise flow brings the moisture in off of the ocean. Strong winds down here between that high and Danielle. Moving in on the mid-Atlantic coast during tomorrow, there'll be some beach erosion down here as well, especially New Jersey and points south where they have tropical storm warnings. Cape Lookout, North Carolina to the Virginia, North Carolina border at the present time. That storm will then track off toward the northwest right up in here. The heaviest rains, maybe four to six inches, some spots down here arcing to the north, but staying to our west. Nonetheless, we still can have a couple of, oh, drizzly patches moving in, especially tomorrow night and on Saturday, and a couple of leftover showers possible here during later Saturday on into Sunday. So the weekend does not look as good as it did the past couple of days. Sky scan showing us some high, thin, wispy clouds for northern New England tomorrow and on Saturday. Heading north for the foliage, that's going to be the best place to be, I think, this upcoming weekend. Around here, the low clouds, even during later tomorrow, patchy low clouds moving in what we call stratocumulus clouds, 
working in here along our coastline. So not the greatest idea the way it looks to me. Uh, foliage peaking up in far northern Maine, Vermont, back into northern New York State, right up in here. That's where we've got peak fall colors, and that's where the most sunshine will be this weekend. So good news there. Gray down in these zones here with all the cloudiness and the winds in off the water. And, uh, well, we'll start to see our foliage peaking around here come about Columbus weekend, Cape Cod very late in October. And you can see in the middle here, central Massachusetts around October the 10th. Well, you got the paper and pencil ready. We've got some leaf lines to share with you. And you can get the very latest on the foliage. Oh, those are big leaves. Imagine having to raking all those up. Thank goodness they're not that big. Well, we're talking Massachusetts. We've got, well, 1-800-632-8038. 3239 as you head on into Vermont. That's an 802 number, 533-9595 in Maine, and 800-258-3608 for New Hampshire. Your leaf lines for the very latest on the fall foliage and the splendor with those magnificent maples and the beautiful birches coming on in color in northern New England. And of course, we'll update you here in the coming days and weeks as well. So let's check out the forecast for Boston and vicinity shaping up this way. Overnight tonight, we're calling for the starry skies out there. A few coastal clouds possible, mainly clear. 45 in town, the old heat island, but some suburbs will be down near freezing. Jack Frost visiting once again. You'll scrape the windshields off as you head to work early tomorrow morning. Sparkling sun tomorrow inland. Patchy coastal clouds will start to work in mid to upper 50s on the coast, mid to upper 60s inland. Tomorrow night, looks like we're going to have low clouds around. Could be a dab of coastal drizzle late. Low is near 50, stiff winds again in off the water. And as we move on into the weekend, more clouds than sun, could be some coastal drizzle, even some showers before Saturday's out. Highs only in the upper 50s, and a Sunday doesn't look too good right now as we check out the outlook for you. In the 60s, a lot of clouds, perhaps a few showers, the leftovers of Danielle, but the heaviest will stay to the west. We may warm it up. Taste of summer early next week, becoming more humid at that time. Big changes in the weather pattern showing up for next week. Could mean a snowstorm in portions of the Great Lakes, so uh, oh. things are on the move. This weekend, look for a good movie, huh? Or two. Or two. <laughs> it won't be a wash. Good it's advice. Nice. A little chill in the air today, especially along the coast, huh? A lot of wind. Yeah, a lot of wind out there, and that'll be the pattern on Saturday. So if you like today, you're going to love Saturday. Sort of mirror it uh -huh. the mm -hmm. way it looks to me. So we're talking delicious days for most of the upcoming weekend, the way it looks to me. But so. you teased a little rain. Maybe a shower tomorrow. You know, let's not highlight that, because okay. it'll be maybe a sprinkle. But sunshine for the weekend, you'll relish it. Can you tell I got a cookout on my mind? <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk about that weekend weather everyone wants to know. Great for outdoor activities. It appears that Sunday will be the sunniest of the three weekend days. The windiest weather, I would say, would be on Saturday. Again, much like today, out of the northwest, 20 to 30 miles per hour. Sunglasses and sunscreen a must. Perhaps some of you out for the first lengthy period of time this season for a back-to-back-to-back -back -back kind of days here, and uh, you want that sunscreen handy. Cool at night, so the sweaters, you'll need those. And pollen problems do continue here, the main culprits being, of course, oak and pine. The main attributor to the problem here is oak at the present time, uh, offenders to most people rather than pine. Beach and boating interests, uh, some highlights for you. Very windy, again, on Saturday, choppy seas. Beware of that, mariners. Excellent visibility through most of the weekend. There's a slight chance that on Memorial Day itself, Winds will blow in off of the water and cause some low clouds and fog to try to work in. Water temperatures only in the 50s, so you've got to be a polar bear to jump in this thing. Nonetheless, I'm sure there'll be a few of you out there trying to do that with the sunshine for most of the upcoming weekend. Temperature-wise across New England at the present time, we are finding mostly 50s. 60 showing up in town itself to 59 Hyannis Way. 50s off to the northwest as well, 55 up in Bangor and near 50 up in Caribou. High clouds are starting to stream in from the west at the present time, and the strong, gusty winds out of the northwest are slackening, mostly under 10 miles per hour now. And further west, we're finding 50s as well, out to Syracuse, 48 up in Messina, New York. Few showers trying to work southeast through Pennsylvania here, but as they do, they're falling apart, not really reaching the ground, running into the dry air. And that's why I say let's not highlight the rain, just the chance of a shower. A few peppered across Maine earlier today. Those cumulus clouds, fair weather type clouds, were a little stubborn and bothersome for a while today. Those are moving out while the others start to move in from the west. We can see that on our satellite imagery, a clear slot that came in here. Of course, last night, little curly cue was the front that came through by early this morning with a few sprinkles on out and a few more clouds drifting in now. But you can see they're sort of broken up. So I'm not talking about any widespread rain at all for tomorrow. Most of the day is going to be dry with a little bit of sun and certainly a lot of cloudiness. Nationally, a lot of thunderstorms blowing up in portions of the Rockies out in here. 
just like here. Look at this, in tremendous fashion. Here we go, watch this area just flare on up. And this is falling on a big snowpack that's melting in the Rockies back into New Mexico, causing flooding out there, storms spinning off the west coast, throwing moisture in that way. But again, that's not a problem for us, another spinning structure down in the Gulf of Mexico. Our flow is gonna be coming in out of Canada, supplying Canada extra dry type weather for the holiday weekend, a blocky type pattern but we're in a favorable position here as the flow comes in across Canada, then across the U.S. Canadian border down here, allowing for the dry weather and mostly sunshiny conditions. So let's highlight each day, break it down for you, starting with Saturday after we get through maybe that shower during tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine Saturday, but there will be a lot of those puffy clouds billowing on away. Beware of that. But the highlight again for Saturday, a gusty northwest wind, 20 to 30 gusting to 40 miles per hour. Sunday, the winds become more northerly, and that is going to mean maybe some coastal checkpoints turning cooler, but generally a land breeze and not quite as strong, but it'll be breezy in east-facing locations. As we work to Memorial Day itself, the winds may start to turn onshore as a high builds off to the north, the clockwise flow bringing in that northeasterly gradient, we call it, and there may be some patchy, dense fog or low clouds trying to work in off the ocean. That remains to be seen. We'll double check that for you. Jim Corbin will be in tomorrow and Saturday. I'll be back on Sunday to update that for you. Let's check out the details of the forecast for Boston and vicinity. Stacking up this way, calling for stars and clouds mixed out there tonight. Cool, it'll be about 50. Winds northwest diminishing. For tomorrow, look for more clouds than sun. Risk of a shower or two. Highs will be in the lower 60s as winds become east, generally light. Now, we may bust into the warmer air during tomorrow briefly in the evening, so the temperatures could go into the 70s in the evening before they drop off toward morning. And again, there may be a shower or the cold front, but that'll chase out any clouds and showers for Saturday itself. We'll see some puffy clouds popping up in the skies out there, but it'll be windy, 20 to 30 gusting to 40 miles per hour in the upper 60s, so a little bit cool. And you can see the sunniest day appears to be Sunday, but again, through the weekend, no real heat wave, but certainly a decent supply of sun, and I really don't see much at all, if anything, in the way of rainfall. So pretty darn good. Oh, well good, excellent. Much better than last year. Uh, last yeah. Memorial yeah. Day, we were in the low to mid 50s and cloudy and cold and miserable. I don't see that right now. That's the way it looks. Mild temps. We like it. Sure. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Trees are vanishing dreadfully fast. In the U.S. alone, more than 700,000 acres of trees are being lost each year. You can help to ease the losses by simply planting bare root seedlings or larger trees, bald and burlap, or already planted in pots. It's as easy as one, two, tree. The first thing you want to do is unpack the tree. If it happens to be a bare root tree, you want to soak that 6 to 12 hours. Now, this isn't, so we just have to remove the burlap, and we'll be right along our way. Simple as that. No problem there at all. Next, what you want to do is dig a hole that seems a lot bigger than what you need so that the roots can spread out. Your feet don't want to be crowded, neither do those roots. We're not ready to water the tree, but Mother Nature's decided to put a shower here. I expected a shower, that's okay. Now we're ready to put the tree into the hole, the young tree here. I've already put some fertilizer on the bottom. And you want it to set about the same level as it was originally planted. There we go. Now we're ready to shovel the soil back into the hole here. And we'll just fill that on up. When you're done with this, you don't want to pack it, put your body weight on there. Leave it nice and loose the tree will be happy as a peach, even if it isn't a peach tree. Now I've made a small earth dam around the tree. Now we're ready to just soak liberally in here. And what we're doing is getting rid of some of the air pockets as this compresses it. Roots won't grow in the air pockets. Nice water. Ah, that's thirsty. Okay, we're almost home now. All we have to do is add some of the remaining soil here and replace this whole area that has settled from our watering that we just showed you. After that, when you're complete, you can just add, oh, some wood chips or gravel to give it not only the appearance, but also a little bit of a protective covering. Ah, isn't that pretty? This is great. Now, this particular tree happens to be a flowering crab apple tree. It'll be flowering and blooming and beautiful, smell great, look great. Ah, that was simple. It's already taller than me. <laughs> Doesn't take long. Planting this tree took no more than an hour. In that hour, I got some fresh air and caught some rays. All right, it was liquid sunshine for a while. But anyhow, once you plant the tree, you'll have to become a tree steward, which means inspecting for disease along with proper pruning yearly. For more information about planting trees, stewardship, and much more, just write the National Arbor Day Foundation, Nebraska City, Nebraska, zip 68. 
Ah, summertime. A time to be outside, at the beach, your favorite playground, or of course, out on the links. You wake up, it's a beautiful sunny day, so you decide to call in sick, actually have the day off, and you rush out to play 18 holes. You become so involved with staying under par and avoiding sand traps that you don't even realize a thunderstorm is about to tee off. Warm, moist air rising into cold air causes turbulent clouds to bubble and boil fast and furiously. Cumulus clouds grow rapidly into cumulonimbus clouds or thunderheads. Before you can reach for the old putter, an electrical giant is hovering overhead, and you're up against a bigger killer than hurricanes and tornadoes combined. This killer can kill instantly in a flash. We know the killer as lightning. It's estimated that at any given moment, nearly 2,000 thunderstorms are in progress over the Earth's surface. Lightning strikes the Earth 100 times every second. Each year, 100 people are killed by lightning in the United States. Half of them are on golf courses. Since this is the time of year when people spend their free time outdoors, you should keep some lightning safety tips in mind. Specifically pertaining to golf, there are some definite no-nos. Avoid wire fences and overhead wires. Stay away from tractors and golf course maintenance equipment, isolated trees, golf cars, or any open vehicles. Also, raising clubs or umbrellas increases the hazard when lightning is near. The best case scenario, of course, is to get out of the way of a thunderstorm before it hits. Recently, technology has been developed that gives advance warning of thunderstorms to golf course operators as well as individual golfers. This technology is a one-pound portable device small enough to fit into a compact camera case. It's the M10 Intracloud Lightning Detector, developed by Airborne Research Associates of Western Massachusetts. You can point it right at, at a cloud that looks dangerous, and if it beeps, then you know that cloud's got lightning in it. And that's very useful because you, you, you know it's right there and you can interpret the data very easily because you, we get most of our, of our information through our eyes. And now every tour is using it, including the New England Classic at Pleasant Valley Country Club this week. The detector has been employed to do a number of things, including observing lightning before it strikes, determine when to halt or resume play, provide peace of mind to club operators and players alike, and allow for efficient removal of crowds from the course before severe weather strikes. Unlike radar, the lightning detector is portable and available to individuals. It may well become an essential operational tool for your golf course in reducing lightning hazards. Most recently, on June 13th at the U.S. Open, one person was killed and six injured. This just may have been avoided if lightning detectors had been operational at the time. So the next time you hop on the old golf cart, remember, as your golf game continues to improve, 
so does the technology aimed at making the world of golf a safer place for all of us. And never forget, tea time and tea storms can be a deadly combination.